Hello, everybody. Welcome. If I can get your attention here to the stage, to the stage, we're here for the for lunch plenary. And we're going to talk about something very special is about how we all use the roadway differently and how we all take part of our own community. Hello. Many people use the roadway in many different ways. And sometimes we need to feel safe and feel comfortable and have the respect and demand the respect. And there's a lot of different ways that people do that in, the, in, in our infrastructure. Today, we'll be talking about ride outs and how different communities and different, uh, different folks do different ways of, of riding and with groups together, music. I am from San Jose and we have the San Jose bike party out there. Bike party! And out here, I'm accompanied by some really, really important folks who also started their own bike parties and ride outs in their own community. Um, we'll start off on that side with the Traffic Boys out here in Oakland, California. <laughs> Introduce yourself. How's everybody doing today? My friends call me Scoot like Scoot Over. So when I tell you to Scoot Over, I expect you to Scoot Over. That's what the Traffic Boys do. So we're gonna get that straight first. Second, I know I look like I'm 21 years old. Thank you very much, but I'm not. I'm a grandfather. Four times. But back to the bikes. Now, basically what we try to do is, our rides, we try to get husbands and wives and kids together. And a lot of the kids want to be like the other kids that they see during the woolies and the tricks. We like it too, but we also like to try to help keep them safe because, you know, in today's life, it's hard to talk to everybody. Everybody don't always listen. I demand it. I don't stand for it. On our rides, you're not listening, we stop the whole ride. Everybody stop. You got to go. It's that simple. I don't want to be mean. I want to show all love. But in the bike ride, we just all have to show love and you have to take what you have in your heart and give it to the kid or the adult that will listen to you. Traffic Boy Scoop. And I'm the other half, Traffic Boy. I'm Traffic Boy June. And like you say, I mean, we're about this really bike etiquette. That's what I'm going to call it. It's just everything wrapped all into, you know, etiquette. So, uh, like, so basically on the ride outs, we make sure everybody gets to the right, let the cars go past so the drivers don't get mad, so no broken windows, nobody get hit. So we have whistles that we blow, you know, get everybody's attention. So, um, and me, I've been uh, riding for about two years now, so I'm pretty new out here, so I don't have too many stories, or but I'm, I'm hopping in here first because I love it, you know, it's a way to escape, you know, life's BS. That's about it. And, and, and uh, Traffic Boy Jude, why don't you show everybody your cool jersey, the drip you guys got on. This is, this is a custom jersey. <laughs> Next, we're joined by RB, also in Oakland. RB and I met many years ago with the Scraper Bike Team. Um, and the, Arby, why don't you tell them a little bit about how you guys make your bikes look so cool? Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm RB. I'm pretty sure everybody heard my name a lot. Uh, so I'm RB. Uh, I've, been, I've been riding bikes for pretty much half my life. Uh, I started as the kid that was getting in trouble for riding my bike, and now I'm an adult that advocates for better biking and walking in my neighborhood. <laughs> Um, so three A's and a B, and I help a kid make a bike. Um, I've been doing it for the last 12 years. Um, I look forward to doing it for another 12 years or forever. Um, but, yeah. And the Scraper Bike Team has done so much for this community, and they've even been able to go and work on their own infrastructure, such as 90th Avenue, where they were able to go and ride the way they would love to. And if you guys are in Oakland, I recommend you guys go check it out when you get a chance. 
we're, we're joined by Jason, also from, from Richmond. And Jason, wh what's the name of your group again? Uh, my name is Jason Woody, and I'm with Rich City Rides. Uh, we're... Thank you, thank you. So, a uh, couple things about Rich City Rides. We are a community organization uh, in Richmond, and we focus on bike advocacy, bike education. Um, one of our projects focusing on Black entrepreneurship uh, is the Rich City Rides Bike Shop, which is located in Richmond, right across the street from uh, Richmond BART Station, right there on McDonald. So the bike shop is a project of our Rich City Rides community organization. Um, and through that, it's a worker-owned cooperative uh, by people that are from Richmond, living in Richmond and working there. So. We do a lot, um, just even besides working with our city council members, trying to get more bike infrastructure. Uh, we do Sunday rides for Self Care Sunday. Uh, we have a third Thursday ride. And we also love to participate in the bike parties. Uh, I met these guys at bike party a couple months ago. Um, so yeah, we, we try to get around and see, uh, just to really show people that there's all different levels of biking. We do uh, what we call Fix It Friday which is happening later today up in Richmond at Unity Park, where we uh, have bike stands set up, let people come out, uh, learn how to fix their own bikes. We got parts for sale or even for free. And uh, we've given away like almost 3,000 bikes in the last uh, 10 years. Thanks, it's, it's part of uh, what we do. You know, if, if you don't have a bike, but you wanna come on a ride, we got bikes for you. Um, so. Uh, hopefully you guys get a chance to come out and see us while you're here. Uh, if not, uh, check us later. Uh, we're Rich City Rides pretty much everywhere. All the way from LA, do we have um, right, um, the, the, the mixed race. And, it's a, and, and, and you guys are ride all over LA and check out so many different types of infrastructure. Why don't you tell us? Yeah, so I'm Jane. And I'm Jackie. And we're from the Mixed Race. Um, we're both co-leaders. Uh, the Mixed Race, is you might have seen it on uh, Wednesday night on the Spokespeople film. Uh, we are a weekly women's, women-led, open to everybody, uh, hustle ride that rides at night. Uh, we do about 30 miles each uh, week. Um, going on all over parts of the city. Um, and for us, I think one of the most important parts of that is uh, putting women in a leadership position, showing you know cyclists that we can lead this ride, we can route it, we can keep the group safe, um, and we can ride hard and fast and far. Um, and that's something that is, especially in the nighttime ride scene, not seen as much and you know we wanted to make a space for that um and we have a little film to show you a little more yes, action we, we have a video. hopefully you can see it too
So all over our, our country, we have group rides, and we have many different types of bikes and, and, and communities, and there's no judgment when you go out there and you ride with a big group. It creates a form of safety, it creates a form of awareness, it, it also demands respect. Um, Graphic Boys, why don't you tell us about the type of bikes that you guys ride? We ride um, SE bikes, 29 inch, we customize them. Well, us older guys, since we don't do tricks, we gotta customize them since, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so really our bikes is a conversation starter. The kids come up, adults, you know. Like a couple of bikes out there on the front, right there by the steps. But uh, like, I don't know, just like my bike, I have motorcycle speakers, which goes on motorcycles and it's powered by a power supply, 200 watt amps. But I'm the only one with that on my SE bike right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we ride the big wheel BMX bike. So this is a 29 inch BMX bike with pegs to do tricks. And it's, it's, this is not your small, this is not your 90s small BMX bike. This is a custom, true Bay Area bike. <laughs> we also, in, 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 in mixed race, you guys also ride fixies sometimes, right? Like tell me about the dynamic of riding a fixie with different types of groups and, 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 and you guys are able to keep up with all types of riders, right? Yeah, um, so I originally started riding fixed gear when I was 14, I'm 27 now. Um, I'm originally from the west side of Los Angeles and anyone that is unfamiliar with the west side of Los Angeles, it's a lot of the group rides are in the morning or in daytime and most of the bikes are very expensive bikes and the riders are not always so friendly to folks that ride fixed gear or there is some type of judgment towards the bike or equipment we have. Um, so that's how I ended up with mixed race. Uh, the mixed race, I was not an original leader in the beginning, I was only a rider, and I showed up with my fixed gear bike. With them, I didn't feel judged. There was more of a sense of like, it is a drop ride, so if I couldn't keep up and I got dropped, the saying is, well, we'll see you next week. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, a lot of people felt a little discouraged, but also encouraged them to be like, I need to come back and I need to stay with the group and I need to keep riding and I need to keep showing up because every time I show up, I become faster. And me, um, from my personal experience, riding fixed gear bikes, that made me feel more confident. And eventually I started racing fixed gear bikes and then eventually um, became a leader in the space, in that community as well. So it, it was really nice to just uh, be accepted and no judgment depending on the bike, but as a rider. You guys ride fast, but you also sometimes ride slow and, and kind of take over a, a few lanes and coordinate, coordinate that. And with that, there's many different types of people who have many different types of, of bikes. And, and to have that kind of normalization of, of, of all these different types of users is so important in our infrastructure and, and, and for our cities to, to recognize and mold for uh, instead of having a singular bike lane and everyone's single file and, and anybody who gets out of that is, is, is breaking the law or doing something that's that, 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 could, be, uh, that, that could be looked down upon. And instead, the, the cities can, they can start to mold and change for the actual communities that they're serving and the type of people that they're using these facilities. So, so Arvi, tell us, tell us a little bit about the experience working with the, the city of Oakland and, uh, um, and how you guys have been able to get some really cool stuff built where the community feels that it, it, it was built for them, not to move them. Um, I mean, so living in East Oakland, uh, well, living in deep East Oakland, um, our, our lack of uh, access, we created our own access. So we didn't have a bike shop, so we got donated bikes and made our own bikes. Um, and then we partner with community partners, um, especially like the library, um, the new Department of Transportation, um, as well as community-based organizations to address the need of the community. So after that, we got the bikes, we got the community engagement, and then it's just about doing the work. So when the city proposed they want to do new bike, they had it. 2007 bike plan, and then they upgraded it in 2019. And we was able to, to get the input of the community and say, well, when we ride our bikes, we ride down the middle of the street because we ain't got no bike lane. Um, so we was able to 
work with the city to get the first um, community organization center ran bike lane on 90th Ave. This is a great example about how outreach can actually mold infrastructure for the community directly. Um, and and, uh, and a, a lot of people ride very, very differently because of the lack of or different types of infrastructure that exist. When I, when I used to live in East Palo Alto, I spoke to a lot of the residents there about bicycle infrastructure. And a lot of them ride opposite to traffic. And you might think, well, why is somebody riding opposite to traffic? It's because there's no street lights and there's no bike lanes. And so they would rather feel safe looking at oncoming traffic and getting out of the way than having a car approach them really fast from behind. And they feel that dynamic is much safer because they never ever had bike infrastructure. And so this is how they learned and grew and made sure that they were safe. And so we're all products of our environment. And this, this is a great example of how the environment can work directly towards the community. Yes, yes. So actually on that uh, topic, the reason I ride fast is because I was, I started as a bike commuter actually before I was ever a recreational cyclist. And I was commuting in South LA and Inglewood where there were no bike lanes. I had to ride down Slauson to get to work, which is if you don't know, a six lane um, highway where cars are going like 60 miles an hour. And I would just take the lane and, you know, pray and uh, spin my legs as fast as I could. <laughs> um, and so I felt I had to keep a speed of like 20 miles an hour or more just so I wouldn't get mowed over by drivers. Um, and that's how I became a fast <laughs> cyclist because I was riding for my life. Uh, I, 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 share, I share that same thought. Uh, I mean, li living in East Oakland, being like the sideshow capital of the world, like it's a sideshow every weekend. Um, but my, my style of riding came from drivers driving reckless. Like if, if we drive down the center of the street, um, it make us visible. Um, it make us aware of, of what's going on, uh, with cars coming speeding in front of us and behind us. Um, and we don't get pit in the door zone. Um, in but we we take over um, not as much as ride like our rides is takeovers like we taking over the street to uh, show people that we're here. Uh, one of the things that we've done uh, at Rich City Rides is we've tried to uh, start a bike marshal program. So when we do our Sunday rides. Um, we have some of our uh, youth uh, lead and marshal for the group, right? So there's someone to go down and stop traffic at the intersection before the group gets there. Um, and we try to do these things uh, mainly for group safety. It also teaches like great writing skills. Uh, so safety is always imperative, especially uh, when it comes to like some of the bigger rides, like the bike parties. Uh, we can have like a thousand people in the street riding bikes. Um, so we need people to go to intersections and block traffic. Occasionally we might not have the light, but we got a thousand bikes. So, you know, <laughs> we're not gonna stop. <laughs> but uh, we do, you know, it's one of the ways we're able to have fun with it, but keep everybody safe at the same time. So you, so you, you have actual folks that come out to the middle of the intersection and stop traffic yeah. just to get the kids and the community across. Definitely. Um, like, you know, the crazy thing I love about the East Bay Bike Party is that it's totally volunteer ran, right? So when you like come out with your uh, route, then people will sign up to go and stop traffic at certain intersections, right? Because the community knows these streets, they know which intersections are the dangerous ones, which intersections are gonna be less traffic. Um, so, you know, it, it helps to have that community involvement uh, in your organization as well. Now, all of us have ridden through a sketchy intersection or a sketchy interchange, and it's very confusing as a cyclist. Do you go up on the sidewalk and press the beg button to cross the street? Do you try and wave or put your bike down on the loop 
or do you work with your 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 friends and family and, and community to help each other navigate? Most of the time, these are huge barriers for the community. When it, it it's it's what holds back a lot of people from even writing is the, the, the one intersection just to get out of their neighborhood, the one freeway interchange just to get to the trail on the other side. That's the barrier connection that discourages riders. And it, we don't have infrastructure for a lot of those barrier connections, but the community can still help people pass through. Um, and, and, uh, and there's also another barrier is also just the knowledge about how to fix up the bike and how to, the, 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 and, and how to maintain the bike. I'm sure all of us have had a flat tire and some of us may have given up or, and, 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 and so in Rich City Rides, you guys have built an entire bike shop with, with the parts for the kids. And how do the kids feel when they're able to actually know and learn that they can have access to their own city? That kind of stuff is really just empowering, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, like I said, Fix It Friday happens every Friday, uh, right down the street from our shop. Uh, and it's right in the park next to the basketball court. We set up a whole, uh, it's a small building, about shed size. Uh, we keep spare bike parts, tools, um, and I mean, even doing the services we're doing for free, we've still had people break in, steal bikes, steal our bike parts, um, and it, it's it's rough. But you know, we love what we do. Uh, people continue to support us, um, and it's it's really helped. Uh, you know, the people in our community, like we have, we have kids coming in after school that are like, yo, I want to ride my bike to school, but I got a flat. And, you know, they don't, they don't have money to go to the shop and get a new tube. So we'll either have a spare tube, teach you how to patch a tube, or, uh, you know, we might just have to give you a new bike, get you rolling. So we're, we're happy to help out the community in any way we can. If I can say something on that too, that's kind of how me and June came up with our name because I've been riding since I was a kid myself. And then he seen my bike. He was like, man, I want to ride too. So our, one of our first rides we went on, we went to Santa Cruz. It's like a 35, 35 mile ride up and down hills. If you've been smoking, drinking, or ain't in shape, they're going to leave you. You're going to be stuck. I said that to say in our rides, we don't do that. If we ask you to come to our ride and you there and you catch a flat or something happened to your bike, we got a truck following us in the front, in the back. If you get tired and you can't make it, we pulling over, we putting your bike on the back and we asking you what music you like to hear and we're gonna play that in the truck so we can keep on going. We got iPhones, the kids, the adults, we all use it. Instagram, we all wanna get pictures and videos of what we doing. So when we come out, we got colors, we got kids. I mean, when you see these little kids from five to eight years old, trying to keep up with grandpa or grandpa or grandma really trying to keep up with them. You understand? It'd be the most beautiful thing in the world. So Traffic Boys got our name for ice literally stand in front of a light if it's 50 bikes and they already going, you might as well sit there and wait. Because if you don't, you got to run me over. Traffic boys. That's what we do. Um, so I love the empowerment with the education and being self-sufficient on the bikes. But I do have a little bit of a counterpoint. Um, I do regard this um, lack of... Uh, mechanical access as part of the lack of infrastructure around bikes that we have in, I think, the whole country, probably. Um, I spent a decade in China, and at that time, everybody was riding bikes around, and they, I never knew how to fix a flat in 10 years. Um, I didn't even really probably know how to pump my tires because there was a little shop on every corner where I could just get it repaired. I mean, how many of you who drive actually know how to repair your car when it breaks down or your computer when it breaks down? Why do we have to know how to repair our bikes uh, when they break down? It should be similar to that, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, 
some some communities don't have bike shops. Just like they don't have bike infrastructure. Um, but so what we did to create a bike shop was um, we partnered with Bike East Bay. Um, and then this guy right here, uh, Dave Campbell, uh, he helped us raise funds to get a steel container, which we turned into a bike shop. And then the city was kind enough to partner with us and say, well, you you lost your your bike your your backyard space. Uh, we'll offer you one, and then they offered us one at the library. Which I say a, a year we we fix about two three thousand flats. Um, and so and so just just having that access, like it just give the community hope. So like we didn't have a bike shop. Um, so, but we had a bike workshop that was accessible to the community. Um, so now we moving forward, we're going to get an even better bike shop that could be a community shared space bike shop where people could come and they can make their own Franken bike style bike if they want, or they could come and they could fix a flat if they want. Um, they could have tools to check out and take home if they want to fix a bike. Um, and they could get a patch kit with me on it. <laughs> and also customizing the bike is kind of a form of anti-theft too, right? Because you, your bike is recognizable. It's done, to the, it, it, adds, it adds to your personality. The whole neighborhood knows, hey, that's that guy's bike. That, person's bike and yeah, i never so, had a bike stolen. you never had a bike stolen i never had a bike stolen. i mean wow. just the bright flamboyant colors of the bike and the creativity like when when you make your own bike you no know, no one else has that bike because it was your thought that was created to make that bike so just having it unique um and remember to register your bike on bike index which is free yeah. um, So this type of riding with custom bikes, different types of people, going slow, going fast, this normalizes it for everybody and also creates the kind of respect that a driver knows how to deal with when there's a big group. And this can also help when people ride alone too because it kind of helps not only learn the skills about how to ride or maybe carry a bike, but also the confidence uh, to, to ride it alone, but also to, to normalize the cars to respect cyclists. Um, Talk, can you guys talk a little bit about some of the experience you've had when you ride alone and when you don't feel so comfortable? Um, and and how, how has that improved with the group ride? Um, I mean, riding with a group, yeah, there is a sen sense of being safe. There's a sense of being um, more secured because if you're uncomfortable being next to the sidewalk or next to the cars, you can be in the middle and you have to get comfortable being with other riders. I mean, in general, as a writer, you gotta find your comfortability. And unfortunately, at least from my experience, you know, as a woman, I've ridden alone in the city from 3 p.m. At, at night as well. And sometimes it's not that safe. At 3 p.m., I've had a car chase me down, um, which is sometimes, some when you have those experiences, yeah, it, it hits a point of like, well, do I still wanna ride my bike alone? It puts that barrier of like, well, now I feel a little bit more targeted, you know, it's in the middle of the day, no one did anything, and thankfully my bike wasn't stolen. Um, you know, there is bike paths that are designated for bikes. Um, there's like a river path that has bike paths. And even then, there unfortunately, during the pandemic, there were people um, kind of um, waiting with walkie talkies and used to steal those bikes. So they would see a bike go, and they would walkie talkie someone, and then someone else at the other end would take the bike. So having those experiences, it definitely makes you more aware of your surrounding. It makes you more aware of, of uh, just how comfortable you are to be alone in, on your bike. Um, and there is a sense of a buddy system. A lot of the women in our community, we have a chat that we all communicate with one another in case something does happen. We are aware of what's going on. If something, in, something happened in a certain part of the city, we can keep our eyes open. Um, being a part of a group, it's nice because there is a sense of community. If people reach out and be like, hey, are you, are you free this time or free this day? Let's do a ride together. Okay, there is that sense of um, 
familiar knowing them and um, being like, cool, we start a mini group or we have a buddy. Now we're going to go do a ride. And it, it bonds more of a community of a friendship. And especially through mixed race, um, a lot of us met people that we probably would not have met if it wasn't for our desire to ride bikes. And um, yeah, I mean, that in general just helps us be more comfortable on the road. It helps us more com build more comfortability and have that awareness of what to do if we're not comfortable. Um, and yeah. Comfort is everything. You, you want to feel comfortable in your own neighborhood just going around. In highway design, we design for comfort. And you can roll up your windows and have an AC and block out what's going out. But you can't do that on the bike. You know, if somebody's chasing you down or somebody's making noise or somebody's staring or anything or, or somebody's throwing rocks or all kinds of things can happen to you on a, on a cyclist. Yeah, I've been chased down before by a, a car driver and it was very scary having to look over the mirror and him kind of nudging towards me and flipping me off. And it was a very scary experience and it made me really nervous to go back to that neighborhood and, and, and ride. Um, it took me a little bit of time to get used to riding again. And, and I, I, I'm sure a lot of us have had very, very scary experiences being alone on the road, single file, not being able to be next to your friends and not being able to look rub shoulder and shoulder and joke or even talk about, hey, don't go on that road or this is a, this is, you have that level of communication. Um, traffic boys, you guys ride in groups almost all the time just to give, give, give normalcy to, to uh, uh, folks. Well, how, do you feel uh, scary when you ride alone with, with your, your bike? Uh, well, for me, since my bikes are customized, I, mm -hmm. I feel very scared to ride alone because I, I feel like they're going to, you know, somebody might take my bike. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I do feel safer in a group. I don't wear my helmet in a group because I feel safe and we're riding at a certain speed. So if I ride alone, I do wear a helmet, but it's, uh, it's safety in a group to me. <laughs> you got mm -hmm. a bunch of people to protect you. You got more eyes, you know. People to pull out their phone and catch somebody doing something. Yeah, so a ride in a group is much safe. Because you put a lot of cool stuff on your bike. Like if you have speakers or you got your cell phone or if you got like all kinds of stuff, it, it, it can be scary. I would say don't don't ride scared. I don't care where you're riding at. Don't ride scared. That'll make you, to me, you might get hurt faster from being scared. We all here, we all ride on bikes. I don't care what your nationality is, what kind of bike you ride on. When you out and you own a bike, that's my family over there. When I'm riding, I be like trying to find which one they want, the thumb, the anchors, the whoop whoop, you know. <laughs> Because I want them to feel comfortable when I ride by because I'm going to have my music on. But I push that when we ride on our bikes. You can have any name or no name. You can have a good bike or a bad bike. If we ride together, we together. If I'm in a car, I ride on bikes. So if I see bike riders, I might have a different respect. But at the same time, that won't stop me from rolling down my window and say, hey, man, have a little bit of respect. I ride bikes, too. It might even be in the back. But I'm saying we all family when we on the bike, period. I met some very, very great people over the last three years from riding on bikes that they friends with me like people that I didn't grow up like him since high school, junior high school. And I mean, I didn't met some people on bikes that generally have the best hearts ever. And we in here, we just have to find a way to come together and help each other have what we all want. And that's just to ride our bikes and be happy. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a confident cyclist. So, I mean, by myself in the group, um, by myself, I'm, I'm taking the lane. Um, California law say that uh, a driver should give me three feet when passing, which means if I take a lane that's six feet, they get three feet this way, three feet that way, which means it's my lane. Um, but so mo most of the time when I'm riding alone, I, I, I tend to ride uh, my tall bike. Um, so it's a, I don't know if y'all seen it when I was riding it Wednesday, um, but it's a really tall bike that's at about six, seven feet tall. Um, so I, I can see over buses, I can see over trucks. Um, a, a car can't say that and see me. Um, and so I'm, I'm visible, I'm predictable, and I'm aware. Um, 
The only thing that concerns me about riding like solo is like I, I got a six year old son that's he he's just getting into cycling. And California law say he can't ride in the street. He got to ride on the sidewalk. But then California law say that I can't ride on the sidewalk and I had to ride in the street. Um, so that that's the only thing concerning me about riding solo because he will be solo if he riding on the sidewalk and I'm riding in the street. Um, as far as like group riding, like group riding is the best experience that you can experience in life, in my opinion. Um, I met I met so many great people and had so many great conversations by just getting out and riding my bike. Um, so I encourage people like to do as many group rides as you can. If you're having a bad day, call some of your friends and go on the group ride. Um, get some fresh air. Um, uh, cause they say, uh, people power could change the world, uh, but pedal power can save it. So if you're riding in a group and you're, you're, you're being safe, you're being organized, you have what you call Jedis, or you guys call them Jedis, the people who are trained and to know how to block the street and, and, and help people navigate. But when you ride... Hopefully, when if the community and the drivers see that that bicycles are able to navigate properly, not properly, but navigate safely in groups, then when you're alone in that same community, there is a, it adds to the level of respect. Um, and 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 and, 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 and when two bikes, when even if two people are riding alone, they might recognize each other. The Jedi's know how to how to organize. Um, talk to me about a little bit about how the Jedi has become. Us. Cool. Uh... So at River City Rides, we have a Jedi Fellowship, right? And it's justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, we have uh, youth from ages 15 to about 22. Um, and they get paid. They all get paid uh, 15 bucks an hour. Uh, they come in. Um, besides just learning the basics of bike mechanics and things, uh, we have them, um, like I said, we do uh, the bike marshal trainings. We have uh, various uh, political organizing we've also done with them. Um, we had them host a uh, Juneteenth ride last year uh, where we um, actually went to um, the Richmond Historical Society, went through some old newspapers, found out that uh, the KKK had done a march right down McDonald Avenue in the middle of Richmond, where we now have our black owned bike shop, right? Um, so we, you know, learned about these things, we're able to present them at the ride. Um, but, you know, we, we want to really cultivate uh, full whole people, right? Um, not just the bike side, but also like the personal development side as well. So, uh, that, that's really where we start our program, but um, I love it because, you know, now they actually just hosted the self-care Sunday ride by themselves. Uh, I was out of town last week, uh, but they were able to come in and get everybody registered, signed up, make sure all the bikes were working, and do the whole ride themselves, which has been really cool to see them, you know, go from, oh, what is this, what's the difference between the front wheel and the back wheel, to now you know, they're doing everything themselves. So cool. And it's also about how we're, we're seen and what we wear. Um, you mentioned three feet, and Jane, you, you, you have a three feet shirt. That, 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 tell us about how you think drivers would recognize or react to that. Yeah, so shout out to the LA Bicycle, LA County Bicycle Coalition. I think some of you all are here. <laughs> Um, I volunteered at one of their events and they gave me their, um, one of their shirts that on the back, it has the California vehicle code that says bikes may use the full lane. And I definitely notice when I wear that shirt, um, drivers seem to give me more space and I've had drivers actually comment on it. Um, and I've also had, you know, at, in addition to the many unpleasant interactions with drivers, some pleasant ones where you know they've passed too close and I've been able to calmly 
I'm not always able to calmly say it, but <laughs> when I'm able to calmly say it, you know, I've had drivers say, oh, I didn't know that. Thanks for letting me know or whatever. Um, but then we also had a driver last weekend call us organic privileged white bitches or something because we were riding in the lane and she wanted us to share the road, which meant go in the gutter. So, but organic, it's our new buzzword. <laughs> So the <laughs> people are obnoxious sometimes, especially car drivers. Like, I don't know, I think it's the air conditioning, it gets to them. You know? <laughs> but cycling is a great form of, of freedom and that's how it always has been for, for folks, is the ability to get around and be able to go around your own neighborhood and feel comfortable in your own neighborhood. And historically it's always been that aspect, but through the years, we've, we've pushed it out of the way or we've expected a certain form of cyclist, somebody who's, who's following all the rules a certain way, somebody who knows how to follow the rules a certain way, somebody who knows how to navigate. And we have bicycle touring classes that tell you to ride a certain way. And now in these, in, now in, 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 this is all very formal. But what we're, ha what we're seeing here is, is how the community can come together and, 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 and help each other navigate. And I think this is a lot of notes for the cities to, to recognize with is the cities will open up their own bike shops. Cities will have, maybe there is already a bicycle advocacy groups, but at the end of the day, we all ride very differently. And there's so many different types of, of, of riders. As a designer, uh, we, I design a lot of intersections. And even now these days, we're thinking about two different types of cyclists. We're thinking about a faster, more vehicle centric cyclist and also a more pedestrian centric cyclist. Because now we're in a very new world with e-bikes and people who have been commuting for a long time and we're trying to encourage the interested but concerned community, people riding with their kids, people who ride with, with their elderly, people who ride with, um, with, with, together. And since we're all trying to encourage that, we need to do a lot of listening to groups like this who come together and, and find the answers and come find solutions. Tell us. Any of you guys have an interesting story to share about how how you, you felt that this movement that you guys have been doing over the years has really been heard from the local cities? Um, I mean, I, I feel like I, I went to college for culinary arts and it turned out that Cycling, well, being an advocate for my community was my outlet to to changing my community, not as much as getting out. Um, but just just having allies like Oak Dot, um, the library, um, uh, Bike East Bay, just being able to see like the work that they was doing, it, it just encouraged me to continue the work I was doing um, and help me become like the, the leader I am today. Um, and just being able to like be be the change that I want to see in my community. Cause as a youth, I was told like, oh, you a bad kid, you running lights, you swerving parked cars, you ain't got no brakes on your bike. Um now, now that I'm an adult and like my my kids come out and they ruthless, like they popping willies, they swerving cars, they they shutting down the intersection so so the people could ride their bikes through it safely. Um but it, it was just about education, like educating them how they do a quick turn at a bike safety class. Um, now they, they want to do it on the wheelie because they want to elevate their skills and sharpen their skills. Um, but it was just the unity, like creating the unity in the community um, and promoting the going green in, in the hood lifestyle. Um, We brought our sister up here now. She's part of the Fixie world. So you guys probably know her. She's been riding much longer than me, but we brought her up here to say say something. <laughs> Hi, my name is Messiah. Um, first, I, well, I got a lot of things that I want to say first, um, but I'll first start with, I just became the certified bike instructor through the LCI. Uh, I am cross-trained on multiple bikes. So I ride uh, fixed gear. I just picked up fixed gear like two years ago. Love it. Um, so shout out to, hey. Um, I moved 
moved here to the Bay, originally born in West Africa, moved here to the Bay. Um, I was able to meet a great, like, I was able to meet people very quickly through the bike community. Like, I'm bike activist. I feel like we got just as much as right on the road as cars all the time, no matter what, three foot, six foot, two foot. Please don't ride up on me, because we're going to start riding our bikes backwards, fixed gear, so we we'll just take them out that way. <laughs> we'll take them out that way. Um, I also have two children that cycle, 11, um, Jeremiah, 11, and then I have a 17-year-old named Jalen Berry. And Traffic Boys. This was one of my first, whoo, family, you'll make me cry. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, okay, hello. Well, you, you know you're my family. Um, just coming into the community, um, Jeremiah, and, well, my children and I, we had a hard time um, finding a community to ride with. I've been harassed riding, like, uh, riding on the side of the road from cars, hearing hackling from men. Can I be your friend? And you holding up a whole line trying to just, you know, it's a scary feeling. Then I have my sons behind me. So um, when I was able to just ride around and I was like, hey, who is this big group of people? And I was I always get lost on my bike. That's how I found my way and found the streets. <laughs> Um, so I ventured over into West Oakland and it was this huge, like, oh, I was like, well, it looks like children because I'm riding fixed gear, so I'm with adults and, you know, I get, I like my adult time, but <laughs> we get some time for the children and I ran across these um, great group of people and it was Traffic Boys. Uncle Scoop, Traffic Boy June, I was able to meet so many different communities, um, just seeing my children is even more inspired. Um, my 11 year old, he just uh, started riding clipless, like, 70, not even, four, no, 48 hours ago. So he's, he's into cycling. He's clipped in, he's comfortable. Um, and then the fact that I used to be out with my children doing something, getting exercise, health. Um, they see me out advocating all the time. They're like, mom, we gotta go do this again. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and just watching them evolve within themselves. Just watching them um, tap into their weaknesses or their strengths through their, weak, through their weaknesses. And just being in the community and just having love and just being new to the Bay, not knowing anybody, I no longer really feel like the new girl in the classroom anymore. Um, thanks to the bike community and just pushing the cycling thing, you're going to ride it literally till the wheels fall off or with no hands, no brakes, with brakes or without brakes. So, but stay safe nonetheless. <laughs> stay safe. Please stay safe. Stay safe. Um, yeah, and my, my children, lastly, my children are also... Uh, cross trained on multiple bikes. Jeremiah rides fix he ride I have eleven year old fixed gear rider. So he rides fixed gear, um, mountain bike, BMX. And he actually came to one of the bike safety trainings with me and was like, Mom, do I gotta go? Do I have to be here? And I was like, Of course you do. <laughs> and um he actually just got he just, he jumped right in, um, got involved, started learning stuff. He learned the rock the rock dodge, the quick turn. And so now when I see him on his bike, he's with other children at the park, like, no, we don't, the book says, and the children are like, what book? But he's, <laughs> and Jeremiah's like, well, the book says, and this is where I went with my mom, and then we went over here, and we went down in the bike East Bay uh, shoppers, and he just started telling people our whole life, and I'm like, okay, but I, thank you for your help. <laughs> um, but just being amongst so many different person, so, so many personalities, so many different um, ethnics, and I'm 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 for everybody, but I'm pro women on a bike. I am pro women. I love you. <laughs> I, I love you too. I, <laughs> but just women on bikes, and I'm so grateful. And it just just being able to find my family outside of my biological family makes like it's it's a whole another. It's it's very dear to my heart for sure. Yes. Um, just to go off what Nasai was talking about, uh, I'm, I guess I'm not that new anymore. I've been out in the East Bay, uh, three years now. I came out here from, uh, New York and I was a bike messenger out there about 10 years. So coming out to the East Bay, uh, I automatically just felt safer. There's bike lanes everywhere. I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of, it's like Disneyland for bikes out here. Um, but... Then I found out about the bike community, right? And East Bay has probably one of the biggest and uh, just warmest bike communities I've seen anywhere. Um, and not to 
say anything bad about other cities, but just the love between the cyclists, the different types of cyclists, um, you know, whether it's like a fixed group ride, whether it's a major Taylor ride, or whether it's just like a bike party, you know, there's so many different groups out here biking. And to go back to your question, uh, I think I want to say it was like last month's bike party. Um, we actually got tweeted by BART, uh, which is the train system out here. Uh, there are so many people that attend the monthly bike parties that BART said that there was a spike uh, every month in ridership, right? Uh, specifically because all the bike parties begin and end at a BART station. So we've got hundreds of additional people, right? It's pretty cool. So, you know, it, it's things like that. When you bring the community together, it benefits everybody. Bike plus transit is one of the best ways to get around. And just, just that that's such a smart idea to just do it to, the, to and from the BART station because you're able to reach cities that are way beyond Richmond to, for folks to come in and take part in what Richmond has to offer as a, as a, as a, as a, with, the, with the community and, and with, the, with some of the infrastructure that's out there. Um, so I wanted to, to thank you so much for sharing your story, especially as a mom and a fixie rider, because I personally um, was, I didn't go into the cycling scene at 14. You know, I, I started, I was a kid. I was a kid who was six and was on the connected bike for my mom. My mom was a mountain biker. She was a road biker. She was a person who taught me how to ride bikes. And um, she thankfully gave me the courage that any time I was afraid, any time I did have a bad in interaction on the road, she would be the one to be like, you know what? It just that makes you more aware. That makes you more open to seeing the world. But don't let that stop you. You know, I had a bike that most people told me I couldn't do certain things with. Um, people told me I couldn't ride from San Francisco to Santa Cruz on a fixed gear bike, but I did it. People. <laughs> um, there's a, a popular canyon called Latigo Canyon in, um, by Malibu. It's 10 miles, it's a really long climb. A lot of people always talk about how beautiful it is. But most of those people that do that ride are roadies or have road bikes with gears. And I felt limited, but I hit one moment where it's like, no one wants to go with me, that's fine. I shared my location with plenty of people. I made sure I had plenty of water and I did that climb. 4817 was the gear ratio I did it on, and I made it possible. Um, why, I, why I'm sharing those stories is that, you know, there's going to be people that are going to tell you you can't do it for whatever reason. But you have lovely folks like them, all of them, that say you can. They're going to teach you how to do it. They're going to give you that courage. They're going to tell you you don't need these types of bikes or materials to do it. It's helpful, yes. It's more comfortable, yes. But if you're willing, and of course it, it helps when you have those friends and you make those friends through the community because at the bike community, you meet people that are going to do wild things with you. Other people are going to look at you like, you're going to do that? And they're going to be like, yes, we have to do that. And, um, you know, I also want to give a huge thanks to Mixed Race because I met them through college. When I was in community college, I saw a, like a flyer, a random paper saying uh, volunteers, bikes, whatever. I didn't know how to fix a flat. I did a lot of these rides not knowing how to do anything. So realistically, if I got stranded, I would be kind of screwed. But they were the ones who showed me and then seeing Jane, seeing Rachel in the space, seeing women in the space, um, because realistically, again, in the west side of LA, it's most of the bike shops are white males. And for me, it's, it's going in and not wanting to feel like my questions are dumb. I wanna be heard, I wanna be understood and not, felt like a, not feel like a child. Um, so with them and their encouragement and their help and now being now in a leadership role with them, it, it, it gives me some type of, um, something to be proud of and it helps me like I mean I'm happier in general it's a happy experience to be a part of the cycling community unfortunately I lost my mom a couple months ago and because of finances things were difficult and the n number one community that stood up 
with my cycling community. Everyone came in, every, everyone came, gave me condolences. We're doing a 200 mile ride that my mom did um, from Los Angeles to Santa Barbara and back. That's our way of her celebrating her life. Um, again, it is self-supported. It is definitely, if you feel like you're up to it, go for it. There is bailout points as well. Um, so if you're willing to do 50 miles, there's a way to get back home. If you do 100 miles, there's a way to get back home. It's just amazing to see the community, how it shows up for you. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the product of what you all are going for. And I think it's amazing. And I, and I thank you know, everyone for being here. Thanks. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm definitely a product in my environment. Um, so I mean, as a as a ride leader, um, one of the best things I experienced um, was being a commissioner on the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. Um, so, so I spent six years uh, on the BPAC, which I I termed out last year. But I, I was able to connect with my community um, different than, than most ride leaders in my community because like I, I, I had to, I was like the link to my community, to the city. Um, living in East Oakland, it, it's hard for our residents to make it to City Hall to make meetings. So being able to be a representative of my community, um, I was able to bring the city to us um, through bike riding. So. I hosted Paho City Rides where we did bike rides and we looked at Paho. So we was able to bring out um, city staff so that so they can see the potholes and the disparities that we face to uh, connect the public to transit or connect the public to the library um, or even get a kid to school safe um, on the sidewalk or in the bike lane. Um, and it, it was just enjoyable and I encourage everyone that, that um, want to be a great advocate to look into it. Like, does your city have a pedestrian and bicycle advisory commission that you can advocate for your community? And I just wanted to add to um, what the panelists said, and this is, might be my last time speaking, I don't know. Um, the thing that I most promote and am for, you have to do this, you have to have a heart. You if, cause, Because if the money runs out and you're only doing it for money, so are you gonna really do it again? And we're trying to save the next generation. So when I ride with my son, it's not about us just getting outside and just being on the bike, it is. But then we're trying to bring in the next generation. So who I'm looking for, I am looking for older, everybody's welcome, however, I'm looking for the next generation. Like even I have a 17 year old, okay, cool. But then I have 11 year old. So it's the next generation, next generation and they need to be inspired. They need to be encouraged and not for a paycheck or those things are good. I'm not saying that we don't need those, you know, to keep things running. However, we need to keep the heart first and foremost in love for the community and love for the youth. Because the problem is, is we don't, the youth don't feel love. But then we want them to, well, you got to listen to me, you have to do this. So just in every space, we need to keep our heart first with that. And that, I'd say this, the cities are, are, are learning from you, from you all. Um, you guys are, you should be proud of being able to cross all these barriers and pave new ways. Um, being part of a bicycle pedestrian commission is one of the biggest things you can do in your community to actually bridge that gap and disconnect there is from the city to the actual community. Having that sort of representation to advocate for what the different needs are is the way to actually communicate with the city. And so Arby, you should be really proud of being able to get into there and spread the love and tell the cities about how, hey, these is, we, we, it's changing the entire dynamic. Instead of saying, hey, you need to have a certain speed bike with a certain amount of speeds. You need to have a helmet. You need to have Lycra. You need to, bike needs to be 2,000 bucks. You should know how to like maintain it. And these type of, these are all barriers to people. And what we've seen 
over the last 40, 50 years of how we've designed and planned our infrastructure with policing cyclists a certain way, which is designing for shared use a certain way, that the dynamic and the character of, of, of the people who ride is not where we want to be in the future, right? The, the people who ride that way are the ones maybe that's aggressive, they may say that there's a certain, you need to be, have a certain bike, you need to look a certain way, you need to act a certain way, but we need to, when we're planning for the future and planning for love and planning for all depths of, for the children, for different types of riders, for people of color, for women, for transgender, for everybody of every different background, we should be starting to think about how we can have, be more accepting of how we plan it, our infrastructure and, and kind of a, and breaking those barriers. And so you all should be very proud of what you've been able to do with your community, listening to the community and eventually working your way so that the cities are listening to y'all. And it's, 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 it, this is where we're, we're headed. And we all talk about community outreach all day. This is the outreach. This is what we're talking about. And so I, 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 I encourage all of you all in all of your cities, wherever you're from, to reach out and find the groups that aren't your typical coalitions, your typical advocacy groups. Find the people who are just using the infrastructure the way they want to use the infrastructure in their own communities and listen and do more listening because they, they, they have, we have a lot to say. People have a lot to say. So with that, I wanna thank you all for doing what you guys do and, uh, and, and continue to have these group rides and continue to be seen and uh, um, and we see you, and everybody sees you. Thank you all. But uh, yeah, man, thank you, Mr. Barry K, man. You know, he's one of my favorite people. Uh, so I mean, to, tonight uh, I'm hosting Bike Party. Uh, everybody pull up, it's gonna be lit. Yeah, so come out here, come out here tonight. Join uh, RB, RB, what time are you, you hosting the Bike Party? Uh, so tonight I'm hosting Bike Party. We'll meet at Oakland City Hall at 7, 7.30, and then we'll roll out at eight. And no, no big worry, cause we we'll ride down Telegraph and hit a lake lap, so we can pick everyone up. Sweet, come join us for bike party. Bike party.